Uh, let us now read this poem. This poem, as you, you, you will notice, it is written in four line stanzas, it is in quatrains, and it's quite a long poem. And in the end, there is this, there is this epitaph. Okay, let us start reading. Elegy written in a country churchyard by Thomas Gray. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee. The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. So, in the first stanza, we see that the speaker, uh, it is not necessarily the poet, the speaker, observes the signs of a country day, which is drawing to a close. A curfew bell is ringing, a herd of cattle is moving across the pasture, that is the fields, and a farm laborer is returning home. And now, when everyone is returning home, the speaker is then left alone to contemplate the isolated rural scene. Now, the first line of the poem sets a distinctly somber tone. The curfew bell does not simply ring, it knells, a term which is usually applied to bells which are rung at a death or funeral. So from the start, Gray reminds us of human mortality. And uh, actually, the curfew tolls the nail of parting day. Curfew is actually the time when in medieval England, this bell was rung in the evening to signify that all the citizens must go to bed. Uh, and that, that was one of, the, one of the rules that they had to observe. So the curfew mournfully tolls the end of the day. And the tired farmer he is plodding his way home. Plodding, obviously, it, uh, it gives us the impression that he is tired. He is moving slowly. And all these images the bell ringing, the day is coming to a close, evening is approaching, the lowing herd, the cattle, they are, uh, they are crying out. All these go to build up a dark and dismal mood that artistically prepares us for the dark thoughts which, which would come later in the poem. And when the world is left over to darkness, the poet mentions himself in identification with this natural scene of a dusk being overtaken by the darkness of the night. So the poet or the speaker, we might say, he has introduced himself right in the very opening quatrain as a part of the natural landscape. He is observing the scene and an identification is built up between the poet and the natural landscape. And this identification, which is built up between the speaker or the poet and between nature, will, of course, emerge more prominently, more uh, strongly in the poetry of William Wordsworth. As we know, Wordsworth is known as the uh, poet of nature. Now let us read the second stanza. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight, and all the air a solemn stillness holds, save where the beetle wheels his droning flight, and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. So, 
The second stanza sustains the somber tone of the first. The speaker is not mournful, but he is pensive. He is in a meditative mood as he is describing the peaceful landscape that surrounds him. Even the air is characterized as having a solemn stillness. And the glimmering landscape that is slowly fading because the light is fading and everywhere there is a solemn stillness, a stillness uh, which is coming on. It is, it can be felt and there is only the sound of a beetle which is droning or which is making a kind of a droning sound uh, when it is flying. Save means accept. And now the cattle, they have returned to their folds, distant folds, their pens. And the bells are ringing, the bells that are tied to their uh, necks are ringing and they are feeling drowsy. So they are feeling sleepy, they are about to go to sleep. So here also in the second stanza, the mood uh, of a kind of a retirement a lull, a kind of a lull. The day has come to an end and now night has come. So everything is in a kind of a restive uh, mood and the poet alone is sitting wakeful, he is very much wakeful, he is watching the scene. 